All right, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. We have quite a number of people here already, and I know the number is going to grow. So um, how are you all doing? You guys excited to be here? So now let's talk about laws and standards because I don't see any other questions. So, so far, are you guys good? Are you guys good so far? Are you learning? Are you guys learning so far? If you're learning, let me know. Okay, Rachel, Oscar, yes, yes, yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's talk about laws and standards. Oh, I just saw one question. What's the difference between socks and sock? Great answer, and that's a perfect segue to this next section here. So let's talk about laws and standards. So there are different laws and standards that govern and regulate audits. There are many, but for today's workshop, I'm going to talk about three. We have Starbucks Oxley, which is socks. We have the Statement on Standards for Attestation Engagements, which is SSAE 18. And then we have the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, which is PCI DSS. Why did I select these three? Because they are popular, they are great, and they are awesome when it comes to your career. Some of you might know ISO, High Trust, and other things, um, but for the purpose of this workshop, we're going to talk about these three. Okay, so someone just told me to slow down. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. So um, thank, thank you for that reminder. I'm, I will try to slow down. The Nigerian in me talks fast, and I have to consciously remember to slow down. So thank you for that reminder, Adeyemi. I'll try to do that. I'm just looking at what I need to cover and, um, and the time. And I, but I think we're going to make it, guys. I think we're going to make it. Okay? So let's talk about laws and standards here. So the first one is socks, Sabin's Oxley. I think some people might call it different things, but it's just socks. That's what you call that. So it's a um, this one is a law, okay? It was the Act of two thousand two. Uh, it's a federal law that was passed. I'm not sure how many of you are old enough to remember, but the Enron and Tyco and all those financial scandals that happened in I think the late nineteen nineties, early um two thousands. That was when the SEC stepped in and said, enough is enough. We've got to protect shareholders here. So this applies to external audits. And essentially, companies have to comply with SOX requirements on an annual basis when they do their financial statement audits. So you have financial statement audits, and then you also have the SOX piece that they have to comply with. Um, the key thing I want to share here today is there are several sections for audits. Uh, but the section that really, really impacts audits and IT audits is section 404. And this requires management uh, and auditors to establish what we call internal controls over financial reporting. I used that word earlier. So to summarize this in layman terms so that you guys can get that. Essentially, companies now have to have their own internal controls that they are monitoring. Management can no longer say, oh, I don't know that was working, or I didn't know there was an issue there. They have to have their own internal controls of our financial reporting that, are, that they test and monitor regularly. And the auditors also, in addition to testing um, independently, they also have to evaluate management um, testing their internal controls of our financial reporting. So I want you to think of SOX as it's a law. It's something that all companies, public companies, um, so when I say public, so a publicly held companies, company is one that has shareholders, right? Uh, so they have to report every year um, to the SEC when they file their um, uh, financials. Um, they also have to have a conclusion or service Oxley that they complied with that law. And why is that interesting, right? Because I always tell my students, I don't want you be, to be professional students that are learning uh, information. I want you to think about how to apply it. The, the great thing here is from a career perspective, if companies have to do this every year, do you think there will be a good market for it? Will there be a good market for it? If companies have to comply with something every year. That's what I call job security. <laughs> okay, so from a job security perspective, if you understand SOX, the testing and everything that needs to go along with SOX, you're good because there's a company that's always looking for an IT auditor that can help them with SOX. That's the um, that's the importance of this. So it's not just learning the technical piece or, or the theoretical piece, rather, it's learning how this applies to you. So, of course, um, there are some nuances there, things that you need to test, how you test IT general controls and all of that. But the, this law is something that companies have to comply with. Okay.
So let's now talk about the next one, SSAE 18. Um, I'm, this diagram is one that I think makes absolute sense. This is the first time I think I'm sharing this publicly. This is usually just in my course. But I think this really helps uh, students understand what SSAE 18 is. So the example I love to use is, does everybody, at least in the US, do you know ADP, their payroll company? And what they do is they run payroll for other different companies. You guys know ADP? All right. So when it comes to auditing, because when a company wants to get, do their external audits, they have to look at their entire environment, even if they have something outsourced. So a lot of companies that say outsource services to ADP, that's a payroll company. So ADP, like customers of ADP have the option, and you can see here on the left side, they have the option to come audit ADP. Each single customer can say, in order to support my audit, I need to audit you ADP. And ADP will send, spend the whole year in audits because all these hundreds and thousands of customers are auditing them. However, what they can do is say, stop, okay? I'm going to get an SSAE 18 report, okay? We're going to test all these key controls that um, would support your financial audits or whatnot. We can do SOC 1, SOC 2, or SOC 3. Well, SOC 1 is the one they use for financial audits. And then they have one auditor test them and they have one report. And what happens is when all the clients come to say, I need an audit, they'll say, stop there. I have a report for you. And then they give them the SOC report. So I think someone was just asking me what's the difference between SOCs and SOC. SOCs with the S is Sabin Doxley. SOC, on the other hand, let me go here. That's the name of the report, System and Organization Controls Report that's issued for SSAE 18. So if you were wondering, that's what it is. So those reports are used by the customers of the service organization. Service organization in this case is ADP, the user organization are their customers. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, a customer can still say, I still want my audit, but it really, really greatly reduces the number of individual audits they have because they are able to provide this one report, right? That has, uh, that covers their IT general controls, for example, to multiple clients and it reduces the amount of audits they have to do in a year, all right? Um, when you think about stock one and two reports, they have two types. So you have type one and type two. Type one is only covering the design and type two is covering design and operating effectiveness. You'll learn more about that when we get to the section on controls. Okay. So hopefully that um, diagram that I showed you there kind of explains it because when my students see this, they know, oh, usually go, now it makes sense. Now you understand the importance of uh, SSA 18 and the SOC report. The last standard that we're going to talk about today is PCI DSS. And PCI DSS, again, is a standard. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, guys, SSA 18 is not the law, it's a standard, okay? So companies can choose to get that report. Um, SOCs is the law. Now, PCI DSS is also a standard. It's not mandated. Uh, it's not by, mandated by a gov like government or something like that. But it's uh, put together, and this standard is managed by the Security Council, the Security Standard Council, SSC, and it's made up of Amex, Discover, JCB, MasterCard, and Visa. Union Pay is a more recent addition to that. And the goal of PCI DSS is to protect cardholder data throughout the payment lifecycle. So if you think about um, whenever you go to pay, anywhere you buy something and you swipe your card or you purchase online, your card information, your data, it's flowing across systems and that needs to be protected, right? Because you don't want it to go into the dark web. I'm not sure if any one of you have um, ever experienced fraud, for example, because I know once one of my cards was used in another state that I've never even been to. That's because someone got a hold of my card number somehow. So PCI DSS is developed to protect that cardholder data and it applies to any company um, that stores, processes, and or transmits cardholder data. And the good thing here is that it addresses risk um, for financial institutions, merchants, so think of merchants as any company that's collecting um, card information or any service providers that may support them. And another good thing about this is annual um, recertification, yeah, annual certification is required. So similar to SOX, annual certification, what, that mean, what does that mean? There's more jobs out there. People need to be performing these certifications. 
And even with SSA 18, it's not static. ADP in that example would also want to get an annual um, SOC, uh, SOC report because when they get the SOC, the, the SOC report covers a certain period. So you can't give someone a 2020 report in 2022, right? You have to still perform those audits every year to make sure it's current for your customers. So you can see that with these laws and standards, when you have a uh, understanding about them and you're able to audit against those standards, that really sets you up for um, great job opportunities out there. If you Google IT audit or cybersecurity audit jobs right now, across the US, because I'm in the US, that's what my focus here, um, or even Canada or UK, there are so many jobs, especially right now, because we're coming up on year end. A lot of companies have a year end, a financial year end of 1231. And all these auditors have to make sure they gather um, evidence and start testing by that year end because the, 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 they have to be within that audit period. So you're going to see a lot of jobs right now. This is literally one of the hottest seasons for auditors. Uh, even if they're not hiring full time, they're hiring contractors because they really literally need people to do the work, right? So hopefully you guys learned something there um, about the standards and laws. We talked about Sarbanes-Oxley, we talked about SSA 18 and the SOC report, and then we talked about the PCI DSS standard.